So what you can see here, this is West End Underpass, and the family is a rival faction that is attacking our, our camp, right? They want our resources, our food, right? And then um, they've been attacking us for a while, so right now we decided to go and retrieve the radio, so yeah. we can... And this is the radio, right? The this is the radio. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the pieces that we will need to steal, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, to steal that radio, uh, what we want to achieve with that is like basically hear what they are doing, so mm -hmm. we can be ready if they attack us again, right? Yeah. But, you know, as you can see here, like, uh, it's not going to be easy to mm -hmm. get to their base, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, obviously everything is packed with walkers. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the streets are crowded with them and swarmed yeah. with them. Exactly. And then, um, as you can see here, like, uh, well, the environments look beautiful. Yeah, right? I think it's, it's so cool to see, you know, day by day, how, how, the, how every part of the game becomes more and more polished as we come close to exactly. launch. It's so cool. So, the, the, the point of the mission then is that the, the group of survivors that we play as are supposed to reach that tower that you could see exactly. in the distance. Exactly. This is the... the uh, let's say the camp that they build around it, uh -huh. right? And then uh, we will need to sneak through. Mm. Well, you actually can choose however you want it, but in this uh, playthrough, you will see us trying to sneak through. Cool. Uh, and here we go. There we start here. All right. And uh, right now we're seeing Aiden play, right? He has a silenced pistol. Exactly. It's important, like uh, any noise that you generate in the game. Mm. Uh, as you can see in the top, there is a what we call a hordometer. Yeah. And then any noise that you make will actually trigger this, right? Mm. And mm. then when you reach a specific amount, like you make too much too much noise, basically, mm -hmm. um, zombies will start being attracted to the to the area, right? So, okay. right now you will see that, that there is walkers everywhere. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if we fuck up and then we yeah. do too much noise, yeah. <laughs> this is not gonna be beautiful, right? And we saw we saw one walker with like a super heavy armor. What was that about? Yeah, that's uh. So as you know, the 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 army has tried to. To contain the infection, right? Yeah. Uh, in uh, Washington D.C., yeah. uh, there is still some uh, some cops that were just you know turned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the so, middle. So, so, so some cops have have more armor on them. You have to exactly. pop up their helmets and stuff like that. Exactly. And then you know pop up the helmet, and then as a, as a every walker, right? The only way to kill them is, is to actually pop hit their them in the head. Brain. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we're uh, at our first puzzle here in the missions because all the missions have have puzzles in them, right? Yes. And many of them uh, have co-op elements where you have to work together in order to overcome them. Can you tell me uh, about this one? Yeah. So here uh, the team finds a door that is blocked that uh, basically block blocks the progression. Mm -hmm. So then uh, there is a forklift near to it. So what the team is going to try to do is uh, get it back up, right, running yeah. again. So then they can lift uh, that door. Mm -hmm. So as you can see here. Hey, I I see that keychain. What, what is that? Is that is that a Teddy Moo? That's Teddy Moo. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> That's uh, our homage to uh, the Payday community. I like that. I like that. That's very cool. Okay. So um, the levels are actually um, built in a way that you can approach every situation in uh, the style that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, here the team decide to divide into groups. Yeah. And uh, what's, what's the point of that, right? Because uh, in my mind, you should always stick together. Why would people divide themselves into units of two and two instead of being four? So it depends a lot of how you want to play it. We've seen players that really pack together in groups of four yeah. to make kind of a like Praetorian war, yeah. like huh, you know. Yeah. Uh, so they, if they get attacked by workers, they are always sticking together. Yeah. This group here is a, is a bit more experienced, so uh, the sniper uh, took that path to take down those uh, humans, yeah. human enemies, in a small outpost. Uh, and the others are trying to clean up uh, the way uh, of workers, right? Okay. So in terms of uh, the variety of puzzles that we have in the game, right? Like here you will see right now another one mm -hmm. that, uh, that is also blocking the, the way, right? Yeah. And these are, these are challenges that you're gonna find uh, while you're playing. They are uh, randomized, so every mm. time that you play, they are different. Mm. And sometimes they're gonna be simple, sometimes they're gonna be quite complex, mm -hmm. right? And we do this to regulate difficulty and to make, you know, ba basically every uh, playthrough yeah. Different, different, yeah, so yeah, and and increase uh, and in, just increase the player experience, you know. Because exactly. when you start the mission, you want to play it again, you know. And if you do it, and and it, it becomes a different experience, you know, walkers coming out of different areas and so on. Uh, that, that's that's the fun, right? That's the fun factor, right there. Exactly. Like, like think about it. Like uh, you you play the level like yeah. forty times, right? 
and you can explain a story every time you play. So, whoa, what happened there? Aiden opened the door, closed it, he's yeah. barricading it? Yeah, actually, he's trying to, you know, like, not a good idea, I guess. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Whoop, nope, yeah. yeah, that's the nope door. Yeah, and he didn't want to go in there. This is an important mechanic, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, walkers, they just come by numbers. Mm. So, um, it's like an unstoppable force. Yeah. But you can slow them down. Yeah. Right? I think this is such an important thing, I think, to talk about, that in, in this game, it's almost like you're not supposed to kill all the walkers, right? Because you don't have the ammunition, there's too many, and if you make too much noise, they will swarm you, right? Exactly. So, so that's why you have to use the stealth and... So what do we see here? So here, as you, as you guys can see, um, um, They're looting. the team is looting the, this, uh, this apartment. Good. Which is a big part of the game, to it's loot the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why you want to loot, there is a lot of reasons for it. Uh, your abilities, you can craft them, mm -hmm. and you will see later like how that works. Uh, but you can craft uh, different uh, items that you can use in the level, right? Mm -hmm. Also, cooperation is important. As mm -hmm. you see here, Aiden has marked one enemy, mm -hmm. and then a uh, grunt with the sniper rifle just took him down, right? Yeah. And now it seems like shit hit the fan. The, the, the family has seen us. Exactly. So um, when that happens, like you saw those indicators on their head, right? Yeah. They have different alert levels. Yeah. Uh, the, the first one is like, they are suspicious. They're like, okay, well, I think there is something there. So they will stare in that direction for a while. Mm -hmm. And if, they, if you don't do anything suspicious, they will just then, you know, keep doing what they were doing. Um, if they reach the next level, though, they enter investigation state, mm. so they will approach and check what's going on, right? Like, okay, I saw something, I don't know if it's a walker or a, or a human, I don't know what's going on here, but mm. I'm gonna check out, right? Mm. And then, obviously, the last one is uh, combat, mm. so... Oh, that's, that's when, a cool takedown right there. Yeah. Uh, you know, our team of uh, gameplay programmers and animators that have done a great job. Uh, mm. Like, takedowns look fucking amazing. Yeah, they look really cool. And uh, what are they doing now? This is a, like a different path, right? In order to get to the castle. Yes. So that's a path that they, they decided to take uh, downstairs, right? Mm -hmm. And as we said before, um, we want every run to be a bit different, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a user story to explain. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like you can get here in a lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. um, depending on how you progress and, and what is the, what the randomization seat uh, chooses for you. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, some of the cool stuff that I think is cool because it's in universe, right? I love features where we manage to, 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 to make them a part of the Walking Dead universe. For example, like weapons jamming, that's a really cool feature. Yeah. Silencers exploding, can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, that's actually a very important element, right? Yeah. Um, in terms of silencers, they are uh, the main tool that you're gonna use uh, not to, for your hardometer to go up. So it's important that you keep your silences at check, right? Mm. Um, they can get broken, yeah. so then you can unequip it if it's like, if you see that, the, you know, when you keep it for yeah, longer. Yeah. And then your weapons also, they jam if you don't take care of them, right? Yeah. So um, back at the camp, you can go and repair the weapon, mm -hmm. right? So to make sure that the jamming doesn't happen. And cool. this is something that important, like yeah. keep your keep and your it, tools together. And say. in the heat of the moment, when when the uh, the noise meter you know goes to the top and there's walkers everywhere and the weapon suddenly jams, that's that's when you go, oh my god, what Th should I do? That's usually the moment in which uh, we hear more screams. Yeah, <laughs> right, because uh, you're shooting, you think that you have everything under control, and so it's like, Pack! Yeah. oh, and then um, it's it's a very fun moment, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell me a bit about the different abilities that the characters have, like Grant's ability, for example? Yes, of course. Um, so every character has its own specialities. Mm -hmm. uh, Grant, for instance, uh, being a marksman, right? Yeah. Uh, he's a, he was a hunter uh, before being a survivor. Yeah, before right? the outbreak. Yeah. Before the outbreak. So uh, what he can do is like he can mark enemies, mm -hmm. uh, so they take extra damage, right? Mm -hmm. So every character has abilities that complement each other. Uh, so if you play in a team, um, you can actually, if you use the abilities properly, you can take advantage and uh, you know be more efficient, right? Mm. So uh, Maya, Maya, for instance, uh, has the healing pack, right? Yeah. And um, you know every character has its own, let's say, mm. our own uh, fortress, right? So uh, right now we're, I think we're seeing Heather. She she loves the the crossbow. What's her ability? So Heather has an ability that, as you can see here, mm. that she uh, she's a scavenger. Mm. So uh, what she can do is um, 
basically she can detect around more easy mm. um, where uh, all the loot is. Yeah. Right? Or important items for the puzzle. Yeah. So it's uh, good to have her, like if you are trying to find, I don't know, more food or mm. any of the resources that you can find, or you just simply, okay, where are the pieces for yeah. this puzzle, right? If you're in a hurry. If you're in a yeah. hurry. Yeah, it's or good to have Heather. You're surrounded you. with walkers. Yeah. yeah. Now we're taking an elevator. Yeah, we repaired the elevator, so now we're going up. What's uh, that on the screen right now? So what you're seeing here is the crafting menu. So mm -hmm. uh, Aiden just decided to heal himself. By creating um, a bandage? Exactly. Okay. And right now he's creating a new bandage with uh, the loot that he found. Mm -hmm. So um, you find loot in the levels, in the missions, and then you can craft stuff in the missions with exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. And now they're getting ready up. Uh, and his silencer is just about to break. Look at that. Yeah. One more shot maybe and uh, the silencer will blow, blow up. Yeah. He decided to save it uh, yeah. when uh, they were fighting zombies. Yeah, because right you now. can unequip them. Yeah, yes, that's so cool. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, they were broke. That's when yeah. the silencer broke. So now he has no other option if he wants to shoot with a ranged weapon. Unless he has a silent shotgun, but I know it's, it's not it's silent broken anymore. Too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so yeah. now it's uh, all out action. It's all out action, yeah. yeah. And as you guys can see, like every time that he shoots like the horometer goes up. Yeah, right? on the top of the screen there. Yeah. Oh, and it's just about to, oh, there Boom. we go. There you go. The noise attracts the workers, right? Yeah. So this is a, this is a, a feature that really makes the game dynamic mm -hmm. and, uh, and different every time you play, right? Yeah, because it's like a dynamic difficulty, you exactly. could argue. It's like, a, like the worse you play, the harder it gets, kind of. <laughs> well, yes, we, so we, we punch you in the face, and then when you're on the ground, we we just finish you, right? No, but so, I, yeah, tell me, tell me. So the idea with it is that uh, basically, the, uh, with uh, this feature, the levels become super dynamic. Yeah. Because depending on with whom you're playing, yeah, the the gameplay experience is completely different. Yeah. Right. And even on your own, if you want to go like, okay, I'm yeah. a lone wolf, I want to do it because, on my own. Because, like we're saying, this is an experienced crew playing right now. This is an experienced. Uh, a group of survivors, yeah. so so their uh, hordometer is is nothing in comparison to what if you and me would be playing, for example, <laughs> then it'd be all over the place, right? <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we would go f full full guns blazing, right? Yeah, we, we definitely. Yeah, I love guns blazing. So we see here Grant is trying to fend off the walkers coming from behind. Yeah. So right now, as the hordometer went up, um, they are starting to crowd the area, mm -hmm. right? They know there is humans here. They and they're barricading. That's yeah. great. And then, uh, basically, right now, they, what they want to do is like hold them, uh, hold them back, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, th what is really, really fun is like this same puzzle. If you play it like with this horometer, mm. you're gonna be kind of okay, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, there's gonna be some walkers. You can control them. Mm. But if you really made a lot of noise, yeah, uh, this like the scenario changes completely. Right? Yeah. And this is like how it li like this, for example. Exactly. Holy crap! That's a ton of walkers. Yeah. So this is what, yeah, when the, when the uh, when the noise meter, the word meter is on the top, yeah. And so you're supposed to <laughs> solve puzzles while at the same time fending off hundreds of walkers. Exactly. Okay. So uh, this team has, a, you know, they know the deal, right? Yeah. So they are holding them behind the door, not to mm. get surrounded, because yeah. that's when really, really things get. And Aiden's uh, very hard. And this is we were talking before about you know the weapon families in the game that uh, we have different weapon families that have different purposes. For example, with Aiden, right, his baseball bat fills a particular function in a, a crowded situation like this because yeah, exactly. you can push away and then you can push away many instead of just one. Exactly. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, we have different uh, weapon families. Uh, for instance, Aiden's baseball bat is very good at crowd control. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, you know you can fence enemies easier. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use like your light and heavy attacks to control the zombies around you, right? So, you know, you have long swipes that uh, push enemies back. Then you have uh, other type of weapons for CQC, like the machete or the pickaxe, mm. that are more for individual walkers. So then uh, it's easier and faster to kill one specific walker. And it looks cooler also. I love the machete <laughs> when you machete just cool, slash yeah. uh, walker's head off. It's beautiful. Yeah, uh, the, the fire axe is also very cool too. Yeah, like I really like it. You know, it's weighty and it's, uh, it's a bit it's, slow, but and it's, it's beautiful in a gruesome way. Because it sounds so weird to say it like that, but you know, when you're in, like when you're playing and you're doing it, it looks so cool. Exactly. So the whole idea is that every weapon has its own purpose and its mm. own strengths and weaknesses, and then. Um, Basically, you need to find the weapon of your choice. Like, yeah. what, what do you like to play with more, right? And 
we're also talking about the game being like a battle of attrition, meaning that uh, it, you have so little resources. Like Aiden for now, for example, he only has okay, two bullets left in his gun, yeah. one bullet left, and here we go, he's no ammo left. So how do we think there? Like, uh, w w that, that's part of the game design, that's part of the difficulty, the challenge. And it's also very much in tune with the universe, right? With The Walking Dead. Exactly. That you, don't, you have to take care of your bullets, you have to take care of your weapons, you have to try it. For TV standards, yeah. How dark and gritty are you going? And how close to the comics are you leaning here? Well, I mean, we've done four story trailers during mm -hmm. the fall where we uh, presented each character and where we just showcasing a bit of that uh, grittiness. And we've tried to really stay true to the, uh, like the original darkness and the original mood of Robert Find Kirkman's universe. I think we we're really on onto something, right? Because we hear people screaming as they're playing, and you know, something that is so cool about The Walking Dead is that when shit hits the fan it goes dark really fast, oh. right? So you have people dying, you have to help your friends, etc. And okay. without spoiling too much about the story in the game, yeah, there's mm -hmm. definitely going to be things that happen, you know? So You're going to meet choices? friends and enemies. Are there choices in the game? There's always, choices. Okay. There's always choices in video games, you that. know? And <laughs> especially in a cooperative game, there's always a choice. Do I go for my friend who's lying there, right. getting eaten by four walkers, or do I leave, you know? That's, okay. that's always the kind of choice you got to do in this type of game anyway, yeah. Now, when you say co-op, uh, is it... Uh, uh, local, online? Online, yeah. Okay. It's fully online, yeah. So, so the, the game is a four-player co-op game, but of course you can't play by yourself if you want to. You can't play two people if you want to be like a ragtag, you know, duo. Yeah. Right, uh, sure. Taking on the walkers yourselves. And, and that we're probably going to have people do that, you know, because in a post-apocalyptic setting, mm -hmm. everyone has a, their own idea how to best survive. And that's what we want to be give players the opportunity to try to explore. Okay, you have four unique characters. Do you have any like special um, skills? Right? skills yeah, they do. Or? Yeah. So it's an action game, but uh, mm -hmm. making games. We also love making games for hardcore players who love to you know change skill trees and mm -hmm. try different weapons that have different damage outputs, etc. And it being a four-player game, you can combine, right? So you go full out tank with Aiden, you know, the architecture oh. uh, architect who who has who favors the baseball bat. So we have you in the front lines, whereas you would go maybe with Grant, pick the sniper rifle, scout the area, the tactician of the group. I actually think you kind of nailed it. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, I would, I would make him go in front, yeah. and I'd be in back shooting people. Yeah. Go because, kill that walker. Yeah, yeah, good job. <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing great. I'd be, I'd, be, I'd you know, encouraging him. And I could be Maya. I could be the the medic. So Maya is okay. a su surgeon. Yeah. So I could heat you guys up when everything's oh. over. Yeah. So okay. I'll be, I'll be hiding somewhere, going like, are they dead yet? Are the walkers gone? And then I go sort things out. So yeah. you speak about it. Well, survival is obviously a big thing when it comes to yeah. zombies. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What about crafting? Crafting is a big part of the game as well. Yeah. So okay. as you as you walk into Washington D.C., uh, you're gonna have to find gadget pieces, scrap metals, etc. And these are then used to create different things. Everything from the weapons that you use, mm -hmm. throwables, etc., to other things that you need in the camp, etc. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So I see. Like it looks like kind of a. Uh, the melee weapon that you have out, or that they had out, was yeah. like a cobbled together, something like that, so you can like make weird com combinations of stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, the game is set in a, in a post-apocalyptic setting, so sure. everything's, nothing's working. As, right. it, as it should, right? Yeah, cars, totally. you know, they just stand still. Nobody's driving them. And by the way, you have to stay away from car alarms in the cars, mm. you know, because if you beat a walker and, and they touch a car, there, it might start out. making noises. And you don't want to make noises in Washington DC with a ton of walkers around you, right? Because any noise you make, right the walkers will hear. So mm -hmm. they will try to get closer to you, right? right? And if you start firing weapons, like a shotgun, uh, sorry, like a sniper rifle, the walkers will be attracted to that area. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and because it's humans you're fighting again, uh, as well, it's beca it becomes this uh, three three way thing where you and the bandits are fighting, but suddenly the walkers just arrive from nowhere, and yeah. there's a horde of them, you know. Mm. So they ha the, the bandits have to take care of them, but you have to also, right? So you, there's a really really cool gameplay mechanic there going on. Well, and that's been one of the themes of The Walking Dead since the very beginning. Yeah. It's fear the dead. You know, kill the humans. You know, yeah. it's like exactly. the humans are the real threat. The, the real other threat. people exactly. you meet. Exactly. Yeah. And if 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 you're a big a, a comic book fan, you know, as a comic book reader, that the, the mm -hmm. humans at the end of the day the are the, are the yeah they're monsters. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the family stealing uh, your only opportunity to get clean water. It's not that nice of a thing to do, right? right. So. Right. Yeah. So can you give us an idea of the scope of the world? Because Rock and Dead, you, you see the big shots they do in the TV show, and even yeah. in a comic, you know, yeah. the atmosphere sets the mood. Yeah. Can you start with the environment? Is it open world, or, do you, or is it semi-open world? Uh, it's a mission-based uh, okay. structure, right? Because we, we have a clear idea of what we want to tell for launch, 
and mm. after launch when the game is out on November 6th, we want to see how everyone enjoys the story, the gameplay and everything, what kinds of weapons people do like, mm -hmm. what kind of uh, enemies they like to kill, etc. And based on that, we're going to do something we call like a lifeline for the game. So okay. with Payday, the bank robbery game we made, we still work on it five years down the line. Mm. And the reason is we care. You know, mm -hmm. we built a game, we built a world that we want players to continue experiencing. So it's less of a, like a movie, if you will, and more of like a TV show approach where we just continue post launch okay. and just continue to add stuff. Payday 2 was released five years ago, mm -hmm. 190 updates later, we still are doing wow. stuff with the game. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. our ambition for this game too. Imagine a first person co-op uh, shooter within the Walking Dead universe where you can just continue to get new storylines, where you can, as part of the community, be part of the experience and have opinions about groups we meet, playable characters, mm -hmm. and be a, a, a part of that and be able to say, I want to play as Negan, or you know, I, where right. is Rick, you know, or you know, start petitions online or whatever. Because yeah. we're totally into that, and that we've shown that and we've proven that already with Payday. So we're in a super, super good position, I think, as developers to really give the gamers something mm. where we together can, you know, shape it in any way we form. So hypothetically, you go, Flares not dark enough. Well, well, let's do that then. Let's, okay. let's make it darker, you know? Like let's that. make it grittier. Let's let's kill someone Cyber. off or whatever, you know? Oh. That, it's up to us. Oh, Together with Robert Kirkman, of course, as well, because we want to make sure he's mm. on, you know, before we do anything weird. But uh, yeah, that's the beauty of it. So yeah, a great, a great opportunity for anyone who's into Walking Dead to just jump in and yeah. Kill some walkers. Now you said it's mission based. Uh, how does the, the is there a is there a, a storyline that progresses? Yes. Oh, there, there, there is. is. Yeah, okay. There is. Okay. Yeah. Because one of the things that uh, are, are so good with the Walking Dead universe is the story and the storyline of the group. Absolutely. The storyline of the group that you're following and what happens with that group. So there is a storyline that we are following, and uh, without spoiling too much, some of it can be experienced here at E3 as you play the, the mission that is available here. Okay. And uh, obviously the rest will be available as we come closer to launch and when people get uh, to play it themselves. We were so many things. Husbands and wives, doctors and teachers, writers and architects. But when the world ended, all that ended too. Every day we fight for more than survival. We fight to build a new life. Together, we might stand a chance. <laughs> I got a granddaughter who likes dressing up too. Cute as a button. She loves Peter Pan. She always asking this old timer to read it to her. She's sharp as a tack. Full of ideas, questions about the lost boys. And those pirates. Probably because... Because I never grow old. She says to me, Grandpa, 
Are you old? <laughs> yes, sweetheart, I'm old, and one day you're gonna be as old as me. And this gets her, her brains all cooking, and she says, well, Grandpa, are you gonna die? And I say, yes, yeah, sweetheart, of course I'm gonna die one day. Well, it's not gonna be today. And finally, she says to me, Grandpa, am I gonna die? Well, how do you explain a question like that to a kid? So when Halloween rolls around the next year, there she is, proud as punch, she stands up and she goes, Grandpa, I'm gonna be a pirate. Don't you worry, sweetheart.